Good morning, everybody. This is the Fat Bulb Guy. I want to talk to everybody. we got so many new players this year. We're getting a lot of one-day guys, too. I want to make sure everybody knows how to read our sheets, what we're thinking. So we're just going to use a generic sheet, for example, and a $100 player, for example. So you look at a first race, and you see you know, our top pick. Today, for example, uh, Victoria Rose in the fourth race. Is our is our star play? So you got a hundred dollar budget. You want to key your day and at least thirty or forty dollars of that hundred dollar budget around this horse. Now, say we only got two or three star plays that day. We want to pick about thirty or forty bucks per star play and put our bets around around that horse. So today, I would say, okay, Victoria Rose is in the fourth race. So we're going to look at the second, third, and fourth. We're going to look at the third, fourth, and fifth. We're going to look at the fourth, fifth, and sixth and say what sequence is the toughest, what sequence fits your budget, and what sequence you think you can hit at. And again, you got the final decision in this, not me. So don't just look at the sheet and say, oh, well, Dan's got this play, so I'm going to make that, and you just make it. Do not play like that. We are trying to empower you, the player, and just give you a guide of what we like uh, so you know what we like more, what we like less, and that's what the star plays are for, is telling you what plays we think you should zero in on. So today, for example, fourth race, number one. That's, that's all you need to know. So now you look at the sheet and you say, okay, I got a $100 budget. I want to spend $30 on this play. So you're going to look at the first pick three, the daily double around him, uh, the second pick three, and you're going to decide which ticket you think uh, by looking at those other races, can I get those other races down to maybe two horses, maybe three, spread to four or five in the other race, and try to try to nail maybe a dollar, two dollar pick three for say twenty four dollars. So if you can get it down to two times six on our sheet today, we've actually got the the second, third, and fourth race two times five. So it's only ten dollars. So you may want to do that twice. Or you may want to look at that and say, well, I like those two of the in the, in the race right before. There, he's got five. But you may think that the top two um, plus one of your own you like better. So you only do the two times five once. Then you do two times three. So now you've spent 16. And you might repeat that. Now you're up to 22. Okay, so you got a $30 budget. You've now got a chance at a $3 pick three. And then you keep, say, eight bucks in your pocket in case you blow the pick three. You can still bet the eight dollars to win on the horse. And then, say, the horse goes off two to one. You bet eight to win, that's 24. So even if you blow the pick three, you might come real close to breaking even on the bet just if the horse wins. Um, now, the other thing is a lot of people say to me, well, how do I bet trifectas? How do I bet exactas? You don't spell that out on the sheet. It's real simple how we do our sheet. I always believe in key in that horse. So if you're going to bet, say, the, the, the trifecta in the first race today, you're going to take fire blue as your key horse, and then you look at the, ho the other horses, and we always put them in order that we like them, not that you have to take them all. It's up to you. It's your budget. Okay, so the next two horses, say we got eight as the key horse. The next two horses are the four and the seven. So you're going to take eight with four, seven, and the exacta It's four dollars. You can reverse them for, say, only a dollar. So now you got a $2 one uh, if, if he wins, a dollar one if he loses with the next two horses. If you want to go deeper than that, that's fine. That's why we put extra horses on the sheet. Our guy Eric wanted more horses on the sheet, and a couple other guys uh, confirmed that and wanted more horses. That's why a lot of times we'll put four, five, six horses on the sheet because that's what they want. They want to be able to spread more. It's up to you guys, right? So there's five, say there's five horses on the sheet. If you make a $2 exacto with all five of them, it's 10 bucks. You flip flop it, reserve, re, uh, reverse it for a dollar, you've spent 15. So you can, you can definitely play exactas and trifectas with our sheets and not get overwhelmed. There's no reason to get overwhelmed. All you got to do is look at it, take the key horse, take the other horses. Now in the trifecta, again, it's up to your budget. I always suggest take our key horse, take the next two or three horses, and then take all third. So say it's a 10-horse field. you got one times three times eight. 
So that's $24. Most places will let you bet 50 cent tries now. So that's only a $12 play. You flip flop our, our main horse second, the three horses on top. Now you're up to $24. Um, that's the way I would play trifectas if I was a trifecta player. I am not a trifecta player, so I always try to tell people that. But there's no reason why you can't use our sheets for trifectas. And the same scenario with superfectas. If you want to play a dime super, you take our key horse, our next couple horses second, our next couple horses third, take all fourth for a dime. 8 times 3 times 2 times 8 divided by 10, it's not that much money. I mean, you're talking, you know, small amounts of money there. So there's no reason you can't play our bets with a small budget. Um, you know, a $100 budget guy, I always try to say, I wouldn't put all my eggs in one, in one horse if I was a $100 budget guy. Plus, you want some action. I'm not dumb enough to think that a $100 budget guy is going to sit there all day and bet on one horse. I know that's not going to happen, and that's why we give picks in every race. A lot of people say, well, you know, I just want to win on the day. Well, if you want to just win on the day, I would never do anything but bet straight, number one. And then I would only bet on the four-star plays <clears throat> or a three-star play that you really like, too. You know, there's there's a, that's another example. I had a guy the other day that said we helped him hit the pick three, and he hit a really big pick three and a really nice pick four, and he keyed a different horse than we had. But we told him in the comments that it looked like a match race between the two and the three. We chose the three. He read the form. He liked the two. There's nothing wrong with that. It's your money. It's your decision. At least we helped you say, we think this is a two-horse race. You happen to like the other horse. There's nothing wrong with that. Key your horse first. Use our horse a little bit. And you can. there's no reason why you can't hit a nice big pick three or pick four using us as a guide. I tell people all the time, when if, if you're new to our, our program, don't just bet the exact tickets on the sheets. We're trying to stay within budgets for guys. You know, we're, we're trying to give you examples. We're not listing all our tickets that would take all day. So flip-flop them around. Definitely add your horses, especially when I put spread on a race. If I'm putting spread or I'm putting the word, boy, this is a really, really tough race, and you like a different horse, add him in. Don't just say, well, Dan don't like the seven, so I'm not going to use him. Don't do that. You know, if we got six horses and there's ten on the sheet uh, and there's two scratches, now there's eight. You don't want to use six out of eight, do you? I mean, I don't. I get burnt like that all the time. You want to just go ahead and take them all. You know, so you got to make some adjustments on the fly. I, I, one of our best customers, Mike, made the adjustment the other day. I was so happy. Uh, I thought we missed the pick four, but there was a couple scratches in the race. So what he did is a couple of our horses got scratched. He went back and looked at the most logical horses, and he added them into the ticket because he wanted to spend about that much money. He added in the three horse who happened to win, and there you go. He nails a really good pick four um, that we technically didn't have on the sheet, but he went by our star play, spread out in the other races, added a couple horses in, and boom. Dr. Steve did the same thing when he hit for the 25000 added a couple horses into the spread race. If you've got a bigger budget, don't, don't hesitate to, to add horses in. Don't say, well, Dan just likes these six. You know, I, you know, I could put all 10 if we had time, you know, and listed them out that way. But, you know, we're trying to just give you guys a gauge of what, what races we like the best. The star plays do hit more. Yes, they tend to be more chalky. I'm not going to say they're not. They are because, you know, obviously sometimes chalk looks better and they look like the most likely winner. Um, and if we can cipher out that, that six to five or eight to five that we really think can't lose and we can get a pick three or a pick four around them, we've all seen those pay a ton anyway. Um, yesterday we, we got the escape of the century just by adding a couple horses in and hitting that late pick four. Um, you know, and all we did was stab an extra horse um, with my budget here with, with my buddy. So that's kind of how to play. That's, that's our philosophy of how we want to play. I want to try to keep this short, but if you're a new player, do not hesitate to email about, hey, I got this budget. You know, do you think this is a good play? If I'm at home, if I'm anywhere where I can get to that email, I promise you I will try to answer that email. Um, it's hard to answer, hey, why do you like this horse? Because we could do that all day long in every race. 
But if you've got a certain ticket you want to bet, don't hesitate to send it. I'll definitely try to give my opinion. If you've got a pick four with your buddies, pick five with your buddies, a pick six with your buddies, that's what we're here for. And then finally, and I want to make sure this is clear, if you like a horse, if you've got information on a horse and we don't have them on top, don't hesitate to share that with me. Um, you know, hell, I'm betting too. You know, if you if you know about a horse or you've seen a horse on a replay, you've been following a horse and you really like that horse, um, please send them because I'd like to add them into my bets too um, and, and definitely be able to share that uh, with our fellow guys here. That's why we keep it to 125. Um, and if you're not on the text list, please send me an email uh, with your cell phone and get on that text list um, for last minute stuff. You know, we get last minute information and I'm at the track or something. We can't get to an email list to email everybody. Boom, we can hit that text real quick. You know, horse looks like garbage on a track. Horse is a midget. The other day we had a star play. Horse came out on the track, looked like a pony. You know, we got to hurry up and be able to get the guys and say, hey, this horse looks like, you know, dog on the track. Let's not bet on him. So that's my final thoughts. Definitely uh, when you watch this video, grab the sheets. Kind of test yourself on your budgets and things, new guys, and send any questions you can. Thanks.